And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In a moment, Act One of Run Faster, written especially for Suspense by Lois Landauer. Funny how a guy can have all the ingredients for happiness and still want things that are wrong for him. The whole time I was in the hospital after flying in Korea, I kept telling myself how wonderful it'd be when Chris and I got married. A little white house, simple, happy life. I got my discharge, and we had the house and the simple life. Too simple. The range station where I got a job was on a small emergency landing field. So I was supposed to double on tower work for emergency landings. Only there weren't any. Bill, my relief man, and my brother Dink lived with us. Dink didn't know beans about flying. But he got the same charge I did just being around it. He was over at the field the night the big fog moved in. Chris was fixing the supper I took on the midnight shift. You think two sandwiches will be enough? Sure. I'd better put in a piece of cake. You didn't eat much dinner. No, sandwiches will be enough. Well, I'll just put it in. You can't tell. You might get hungry. The sandwiches are enough. What's the matter, darling? Nothing's the matter. Is it the fog? Well, what's the fog got to do with me? I don't know. You just you just act so funny every time the weather's like no, this. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What's the matter? Hold it, hold it. Just a plane, dear. <sighs> I thought he was in trouble for a minute. Oh, Bill's on duty. He'd take care. Yeah, Bill always gets him. But do I? I sit in that shack night after night, and what happens? Nothing. Is that so important? Important? You think I'm made of sawdust? (sighs) Married life getting you down, Dave. Oh, for crying out. I guess it must be pretty dull after Korea. I didn't say that. You're thinking it. All right, so I like a little excitement once in a while. Is that so terrible? Uh, No. I guess we're just different, that's all. Well, it's not that. What then? Uh, you wouldn't understand. You weren't there. Darling. Well? Maybe if you got away from planes. Chris, I don't want to get away from planes. That job is still open in Clinton. No. We could afford to build our own house in town if you took it. What's wrong with this house? Nothing, but... But we're so far away from everything. What do you mean, far? Clinton's only two hours away, and there's Bill and Dink. Dink should have young people. You've still got a few years left, Grandma. (laughs) Anyway, he likes it here. Look at all the time he spends over at the field. Oh, honey, that brother of yours would like anything you did. You know that. If you'd get this flying bug out of your system, Dink would probably get over it, too. I don't want to talk about it. But it's true, Dave. Oh, I hate to keep harping on it. Then don't. Are you about finished with those sandwiches? You still have half an hour. Bill overslept this morning. Yeah, but he asked me to relieve him early. He has a big date in Clinton tonight. Oh, Dave, that's not fair. Well, what's the difference? Well, of course it doesn't matter to Bill the hours he keeps. He has no wife waiting around at home. I think he's being very inconsiderate. This is the third time this month. Look, I want to get over to the airport. Do you mind? The thermos is on the sink. You can fill it. I just washed it. Oh, Dave! All right. I broke it. Is that so tragic? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I know. If we lived in town, we could get one of the corner drugstores. In town? You wouldn't have a job where you take midnight suppers. Well, we're not in town. We're living where planes come in and go out. You understand? And if I have to bust a thermos bottle to get some excitement, I'll bust one every five minutes. Now, how do you like that? The fog was thick and getting thicker. Before I'd gone a dozen yards, our house was a shapeless blur behind me. And then it was gone. I thought of Chris alone back there, cut off from the world. 
I felt like a great A heel for acting up like that. Well, Bill cut out as soon as I got to the shack. Dink's wheelchair was close to the radar panel as usual, but there wasn't a blip in sight as usual. Uh, um, something wrong? No, it's the same old stuff. Chris, huh? Yeah. Well, it's because she's a woman, Dave. I guess so. Well, it's not so hot for her. Bill sure isn't any company for her when he's not on duty. He's either sleeping or out on a date. And with you sleeping days, it really isn't much of a deal for her out there. Especially with a cripple like me around to slow things up. Oh, nuts. I think I'll check Mercury. Midland Radio calling L.A. Mercury Airlines. This is Midland Radio. You there, Hank? This is Mercury Airlines. You're on early, aren't you, Dave? Yeah, Bill's giving the Clinton girls a break. Hey, what's with this thick stuff? Uh, it hasn't hit out here yet, but we're expecting it. What's your ceiling? Oh, about 400 feet. It's dropping fast, though. Better watch it. Army fields west of you aren't landing anyone without zero-zero cards. Yeah? Well, maybe I'll have company. Could be. Hey, Dave, someone's coming. Well, I don't want anybody to have any tough flying, but it'd be good having a plane land here for a change. Dave. Now, hold it a minute, Hank. Kid brother's trying to say something. Oh, hi there. Can I do something for you, mister? Uh, talk to you later, Hank. Something wrong, Dink? No, no, I'll call you back. Sort of took me by surprise. I, I didn't hear your car. Wasn't none. Did you run out of gas? That's right. <laughs> well, walking's no fun in that mess. Have a seat. My name's Dave Cawthon. Uh, this is my brother, Dink. What's this place? This is uh, Midland Range Station, Dawson Field. I didn't see no planes. <laughs> you wouldn't see planes here on a clear night. No, we're just an emergency field. Just you two, huh? We're real cozy, just me and my... You live here? Uh, here in the station? No, no, my, my place is about a mile down the road. You're married? Sure am. Uh, Dink here lives with us. Yeah, we sail in that little white house tomorrow, a.m. There'll be the neatest stack of flapjacks waiting you ever saw. <laughs> You got any gas? Sure have. We have a pump in the front yard. At your house, huh? Yeah, you got enough in your tank to get down the road a mile? Well, I don't move. Maybe it ain't gas even, but uh, don't move. Uh-huh. Wait, wait, wait a second. Uh, let's see. What are you doing? What's that thing? This is state phone book. I'm looking for a number here. What for? Uh, Clinton, Gables, Games, Garage. Here it is. Uh, the Clinton 25... What the shoe going to do, huh? Well, calling a tow car for you. Uh, no need to walk all that way to the pump and back in this weather if there's something wrong with your car. No. Well, it may not, may not even be as long as I said. They usually have called Don't out. Don't call nobody, see? There's no trouble. What was that number again? Let me see. Clinton Garage. Hey, what are you... G give me that. Come on, hey. What are you... Hey, don't... Hey. Uh, try using it. Torrent Tartan, too. Now, uh, where's that pump at? Down the road a mile, huh? Dave. It's all right, Bill's there. Uh, here's a can, mister. There's no need to ask at the house about using the pump. You just... Help yourself. About a mile, huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, in the front yard. Why should I lie to you? All right. One mile. White house. Front yard. Boy, a real sweetheart, huh? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Operator. I was talking to my wife, Operator. You you cut us off. No, sir, I didn't. Well, look, will you ring her again, please? Hurry it up, please. All right. Hang up and I'll call you back. Oh. I wouldn't worry, Dave. He was just a screwball. Yeah. Uh, come on, Operator. Ring. 
Yeah, I wish there was some way I could get home now. Well, if it was a clear night, I'd take a chance covering for you, but I don't know the first thing about radar. Hello, Chris. Operator, your line at home is out of order. We're working on it now, sir. The trouble is at this end. Oh, that's swell. He's he's at the house with Chris. Well, how how long will it take, Operator? I do not know. Five minutes, an hour, maybe. Hard to say. Oh, yeah. Well, will you get me Sheriff Grover? Did something happen? Uh, Operator, I'd like to speak to Sheriff Grover. Do you mind? The line is busy, sir. Want me to keep trying? Yes, please. I've got to warn Chris about that character. Each time I'd look at my watch, only seconds had passed. It seemed like hours. Something was happening. Hank didn't usually call me. Mercury Airlines calling Midland Radio. You there, Dave? This is Midland Radio. What's up, Hank? I want to know if you've heard from our flight uh, 535 out of L.A. Negative. Why? Are they in trouble? I don't know. They haven't reported in over an hour. Mm, 535's not due over here. Think they're off course. Can't say. They didn't report over Downsville or Little Falls. What's his altitude? That's just it. We're not sure. He was cleared out of here at 8,000. But with the weather doing tricks out your way, he may have been trying to contact us for a change in his flight plan. Better stick close, boy. A lot of people in that thing. You reading me, Dave? Oh, I'm not going anyplace. You should have gone to Clinton with Bill. I hear they're having plenty of excitement over there. We heard some mental patient walked out of the big state hospital over there yesterday. Um, Hank, I've, I've got a call that may be your 535 now. I hope you're right, calling Dave. Midland Radio. I, I better catch it. Mercury Airline, flight 535, calling Midland Radio. Come in, Midland. Aircraft calling Midland Radio. Repeat your identification, please. Go ahead. 535, Mercury Airlines. Do you read me, Midland? Go ahead. Midland Radio to Mercury 535. L.A. has been looking for you, buddy. What's your problem? What beats me, Pappy? Trying to get through for hours at a descent of 5,000. I need landing clearance quick. Estimate 15 minutes more fuel, and that is all, brother. 535 from Midland. We're reporting present weather of 200 feet overcast. Visibility half a mile dropping. Altimeter setting 29.83. Wind from the northwest at 5. Over. Ouch. Report me in the L.A., will you? See you in 15 minutes. Over, pal. Will do. Midland Radio calling L.A. L.A. Mercury Airlines. You hear anything, Dave? Yep, just now, Hank. I'll bring them in here in about 1330. Good. Now, if you can just pick up that lost metal patient, we'll give you a merit badge. Patient? Oh, yeah. There's no weather for a sick man. Uh, what's wrong with him? His hand. Hands? Yeah, he's a strangler. I sat there staring into the thick, muggy night. Chris might be alone with a killer, and I couldn't go to her because of an SOS I'd been waiting for all these months. Chris only a mile away. The heavy stuff outside seemed to crawl in the room as we waited. Not talking, just smoking and listening. I knew any minute the plane might call, but I wasn't thinking of planes now. I wanted that phone to ring. I had to know about Chris. Yes, sir? Uh, operator, how about my phone? Hmm? My, my, my phone, is it fixed yet? I told you I'd let you know, sir. Well, what about the sheriff? The sheriff? Oh, yes, sir. Is the line still busy? Well, break in on him. Talking to Harry Waller, I can't just bust in. Well, cut in on him, operator. It's important. Uh, well, all right, but he's going to be sore. Sheriff Grove. Get off this line, operator. Can't you see I'm talking? I'm very sorry, sir. I tried to tell him. Sheriff, this is Dave Cawthon. I, I, I don't care who this is. You ain't got no cause to be buttoning. in. Sheriff, I'm in trouble. I, I've got to have some help fast. There was a man here, Sheriff. What about him? Well, I think it's the strangler they're looking for. Clinton? He there now? No, that's just it. He's gone to the house and Chris is there alone. Mm. 
How do you know he was a strangler? Well, with the way he acted. And his hands. He tore my state telephone book in half. <laughs> now, son, just because a man's strong enough to do that don't mean he's a criminal. Well, he, he is the strangler, and my wife is alone. You've got to do something, Sheriff. Ah, okay, okay. I'll take a run over there. Oh, thanks a lot, Sheriff. Right away, huh? Uh, Sure. But don't you worry now, son. I'll be there in half an hour. Half an hour? That'll be too late. Uh, Sonny, my old bus only goes so... But, Sheriff, a half an hour, he could be there now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Meantime, why don't you call Lon Miller? Operator, would you get me Lon Miller? Uh, But Mr. Miller's on your circuit, sir. What are you talking about? His line is out of order, the same as yours. Mercury 535, calling Midland. Come in, Midland. Midland to 535. Pull up. Pull up, 535. Execute missed approach immediately. Mercury 535 to Midland. Low frequency radio is out. Unable to locate outer marker. Over. 535, pull up fast. Pull her up. Pull her up fast. ship just missed the shack by a few feet. The open windows rattled and papers were wild all over the place. An airliner full of people hovering only a field's length from me. And Chris, a mile away. Then suddenly, a blip showed up on the radar. He was close. Mercury 535 going Midland Radio. That was 1,500 feet. Ready for landing instructions. Fuel almost out. Over. Midland to 535. Make a 90-degree turn to your right. Acknowledge. 535 to Midland. 90 degrees to the right. Roger. Over. Midland to 535. We have a target at five miles southwest of the field. Take a heading of 040 degrees and remain at 1,500 feet. Over. 535 to Midland. Roger, 535. You're approaching now at 12. Chris. The guy's waiting, Dave. Uh, we're at the end to 12. 535 approaching at... Five, calling Midland. Wait. 535 calling Midland. Hello. Lane, for Pete's sake, come well, on. I'll take the line. Five, three, five, 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 I think you talk to us. 535 to Midland. Request position. Where are you? Over. Midland to 535. You're at two miles. Over. Is she all right? Is Chris all right? Are you sure? Midland, come in. Midland to 535. You're one mile from no, touchdown. Right Over. Dink, answer me. Is, is Chris okay? Come on, now, operator. Huh? 535. Turn to a heading now to the left of 300 degrees. A left turn. 300 degrees. And descend to 800 feet. Over. 535. Descending to 800 feet. 535, you are now at one half miles. Expect to intercept the glide path in half a minute. Let's go, Pappy. Keep talking. Over. Sorry, Dave. 535, you are now one quarter of a mile from touchdown. Set your flaps before intercepting the glide path. You're now approaching the glide path. Your heading should be 300 degrees. Adjust your rate of descent to 600 feet per minute. 535, you are now on the glide path. Glide path is very good. You're tracking on the center of the runway. Here he comes. You're on the center line. You're on the glide path. The approach is very good. 535. Touchdown in three seconds. Center line very good. Glide path very good. Continue approach. We hard a little more, a little more. You're on the glide path. You're on the glide path. You're on the ground. Take over visually. Over and out. I'll give you that phone, Dick. Operator. Operator. Yes, sir. Operator, what happened? I told the other gentleman the whole thing, sir. What? What? And your phone has been fixed, but I can't get any answer. Well, you must not have been trying. Did you try? I've been trying for pity's sake. Maybe your wife ain't there. Are you crazy? Of course she's there. I 
couldn't see five feet in front of me, but I knew I was going to Chris, and I could have done that blindfolded. The blood was pumping in my head, and pictures straight through the fog curtain. Chris with dark bruises on her throat. Chris with her mouth going slack. Chris. Chris. Uh, there was a light on. I saw it in the dim outline of the house, and then I was on the porch, right through the door. She was standing with her back to me by the table and moving slowly around the end of it by the strangler. He had Chris's scarf in his hands. And that's all I saw as I rushed at him. What are you, girl? No! Give me, give me that scarf. Let me go. Stop! Stop! Stop it! You're choking him! Stop! Look, 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 Scott. You dropped your scarf. Look, Tom. I feel. Stop. You're scarred. It belongs to you. Stop. My scarf, it's silk, it's soft. <laughs> you, 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 you okay? Yes, me. yes. You're a nice lady, it's soft. Dave. Are you all right, baby? Oh, Dave. Dave. I know, honey. It's all right. Hold me tight. I'm so glad you got here. I don't know how much longer I could have held out. You were fine. I, uh, I, I tried to be gentle. He liked the scarf, so I gave it to him. I don't know why I should have been afraid. He, he was just like a child. All he wanted was gentleness, and yet something about him. I, I was scared. It's all right, baby. Oh, darling. I wanted you here so much in the excitement. I forgot he could hurt you. What did you say? I said in the... Excitement? Yeah. I guess that's what it was, all right. That's what you wanted, wasn't it, Dave? No, honey, that's what I thought I wanted. I'll call the hospital. Suspense. You've been listening to Run Faster, written especially for suspense by Lois Landauer. Suspense is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Heard in tonight's story were Jimmy Blaine, Jimsy Summers... Bill Lipton, Roger DeCoven, Bob Reddick, Ted Pavel, and Guy Rep. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical direction by Fred Cusick. This is Stuart Metz speaking. Listen again next week when we return with The Silver Shoe, written by Robert Reddick. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Suspense.